recovery during cataract surgery. This is a patient with a seemingly normal type of cataract surgery. Here's the cataract. I'll fast forward to the end where the capsule bag is now empty. We're going to inject some viscoelastic to inflate it. You can see we have a very nice capsorexis. That subincisional cortex is very little. We'll get that out after the lens is in place. We're going to put a single piece acrylic lens inside the capsule bag. So we lift the incision, get a little counter traction, there's the injector tip, and we'll slowly advance the lens. Now, it looks pretty normal at this point. Lens goes in the capsule bag. We'll use our chopper here to help completely place the lens in the bag. It slowly unfolds as the haptics go into position. Everything looks pretty normal here, right? Well, watch carefully. As we look at the lens here, it looks pretty good it's behind the rexus, but what is that? The lens is now descending posteriorly. The posterior capsule is wide open. A sharp edge on this lens ripped the posterior capsule on insertion. This could be a manufacturing defect or perhaps a problem loading the lens. We'll use our chopper here to get underneath the lens, get behind the rexus under the lens, and lift the IOL back up into the anterior chamber. This is important. We don't want this lens to fall towards the retina. You can inject more viscoelastic behind the lens. This viscoelastic will help keep the lens supported anteriorly, as well as to create a barrier to hopefully prevent too much prolapse of vitreous. So there's the lens nicely brought up into the anterior chamber. Well, certainly we can't leave this lens in the capsule. And we certainly can't leave it in the sulcus. We're going to cut it in half to remove it. Now, I usually cut the lens about 80% of the way through. Then we can remove one half, and the other half, which is still attached, will follow. So that's what we're doing here. Remember, never place a single piece acrylic lens in the sulcus. So we're going to remove the lens with forceps, and as we're trying to remove the lens, it traumatizes the iris and we get some iris hemorrhage here. Well, at this point, let's make life a little easier. We should make, give, some, give ourselves some room, and let's slightly enlarge the incision. Here's the diamond knife being used to do just that. Much better to have a slightly enlarged incision. Now it's a lot more room, and we can remove the lens completely. And here's that offending lens in its entirety being removed from the eye. Taking our time now, we'll do a 23 gauge by manual anterior vitrectomy. This is to remove any prolapse vitreous as well as to clean up any of the bleeding. Things look good and we're ready to place our new lens. Here comes the new lens. It's a three-piece lens. There's the leading haptic going into the sulcus. Here's the optic coming out. Nice planar delivery of that optic. And we'll advance it. And we'll get that trailing haptic in the eye as well. Now it's important to do this in a very gentle manner to avoid having vitreous prolapse anteriorly. So now we'll sign up the lens and we'll do a special trick here. We'll place that haptic in the sulcus. Right now the entire lens is in the sulcus. Instead what we're going to do is going to will capture the optic under the rexus. You can see this is what we're doing at the moment here. By doing this, we have a very secure fixation of the lens. It's like a button through a buttonhole. It's not going to go anywhere. Importantly, it also creates a barrier. We'll place the suture just to be on the safe side, and you can see the patient has a beautiful result and it has a nice recovery of their vision. Close call that ended well.